Fellas, this is our raid prep guide. Now, I'm going to be hitting you with a ton of different things to consider. And I actually want to break this guide up into three different sections. One, weapons. Two, mods. Three, loadouts. And essentially, dim loadouts. Fellas, if you do not have Destiny Item Manager, I urge you to do so. I will be posting links for all classes, Warlock, Hunter, and Titan. And essentially, you can literally just press that link, load these mods, and equip everything with a click of a button. I'm going to kind of go through what each one of these builds do. But for the sake of time, we're not going to be breaking down every build in each minute detail. I'm just going to have to take my word that it's going to be some good builds. But these are builds as well as weapons that my fire team and I are considering for day one. So let's start with weapons. Guys, so this is going to be broken up into slots. And I actually want to start with the mod Volatile Flow. Guys, Volatile Flow allows for your weapon upon picking up a Void Elemental Well to grant your Void Weapons Volatile Rounds. We're going to get into a little more detail on how to proc this when we get into the mod section of this video but considering this we did damage test the other day and yes volatile flow on our void weapons is very very good overall the best damage in the game right now is Deathbringer with volatile with that being said my weapon suggestions based on slot in the energy slot I want you to consider the Fug sniper rifle there's a lot of great options here for PvE it's currently been dropping as a roll drop but it can roll with things like firing line Vorpal auto loading holster four times a charm fellas check that vault you may already have this sniper moving on we have bone chiller now bone chiller is really on this list because it is a void shotgun but a slug and it comes with perks like triple tap now i know it doesn't have a damage dealing perk there in that final column outside of maybe like one for all but again volatile easily makes up for that next we have telesto now i know telesto sounds like a crazy one but the other day we did damage tests and telesto with volatile was actually very good outpacing some of our heavy weapons and there's one thing to be said about telesto telesto is a great weapon for clearing ads like a fan fantastic weapon even if ads aren't even there the fact that it applies crystals to the ground you will be able to just shoot a telesto into a group of enemies and it will get multi kills auto reloading the weapon and on top of that if you haven't have volatile flow procced voila telesto's doing incredible damage another void weapon is of course frozen orbit now frozen some of us have some god rolls of this weapon already but you can get things like vorpal clown cartridge auto loading holster triple tap those are pretty much the options i would go for next we have glacial chasm glacial chasm is an incredible fusion rifle if you have that slide shot reservoir burst combo does this work with volatile yes it does this weapon has only gotten better this sandbox guys and that slide shot reservoir burst combination with that increase in damage and extra explosions on top of explosions it's going to be very good now if you don't have glacial chasm you do of course have no composure so either one of those now another weapon to consider two different grenade launchers i want you to think of truth teller and deafening whisper now truth teller is an option if we need to blind enemies blinding grenades are still very effective against enemies it's also a void grenade launcher it will proc with volatile but the main thing is the functionality of blinding now deafening is just really good because deafening being that wave frame and being a void weapon and having the ability to rock things like ambitious assassin and rampage together this is a very very good weapon guys if you're gonna have to clear some ads either way it goes depending on the situation you may need something that just clears ads or you may need something to blind enemies the next weapon is one we reviewed the other day under your skin this is a bow and if you have the ability to craft this weapon beforehand even better it's a seasonal weapon so it's kind of a grind to get but this precision bow has the ability to have one of the fastest draw times in the game we actually landed a combination of successful warm-up and archer's tempo the other day both the enhanced versions feel free to check that review out if you want but this being a void bow yes procs with volatile flow and yes makes you shoot arrows mad fast next we have funnel web probably the most coveted weapon right now i've gotten a couple rolls but nothing that i would consider the god roll i think the god roll that a lot of people are stating is that subsistence frenzy roll now to be perfectly honest with you considering this is a vice smg it already has the ability to reload the magazine when damaging an enemy you can live without subsistence and honestly you can live without frenzy adrenaline junkie i'm being told especially if you're leaning into your void 3.0 abilities it's really really good but for the sake of just applying volatile rounds to literally everything funnel web is one of the best to do it now speaking of weapons that are really good here graviton lance guys really listen fellas graviton got a buff by 40 percent on top of another 10 percent buff for pulse rifles in terms of clearing ads and large groups of them graviton lance can do 
that. So if you just need a weapon to have in that energy slot, use that one. Outside of that, some weapons in that energy slot that you probably already have in case you didn't have anything we mentioned before. Paladrome. You can get some very good PV rolls for Pally. One for all. Subsistence. Outlaw. Overflow. And it works with unstoppable rounds, which we're probably going to need inside of this raid. Now, if you don't have Pally, you can use Bottom Dollar. You can get an explosive payload perk on it, which will work very, very well for you inside of PVE and deal with unstoppable as well. Now, an auto rifle that's actually slipped underneath the radar is Reckless Oracle. Dude, this is a 720 round per minute auto rifle. Some of us have a couple god rolls. I actually have a decent roll in my vault with like triple tap and mulligan. This was actually like the OG roll that would just self proc itself. Either way though, even if you don't have a great roll of Reckless Oracle, the fact that it pumps out so many shots at once with Volatile, it's gonna be pretty good. Next we have Vouch Safe. Personally, I don't have a god roll of this weapon, but inside of PVE, considering it's a void weapon as well, it also has some of the best rolls. Four times the charm, Vorpal, Rapid, hit explosive payload if you got one of these rolls i would definitely consider keeping it on you you never know when you might need a scout rifle now the final weapon that i think many of you probably have is just a gnawing hunger gnawing hunger also being a void weapon i honestly think that gnawing has some great great roles you can go for including the likes of subsistence and rampage as well as a number of other damage dealing perks multi kill clip kill clip etc the main thing is it's a void weapon so therefore you'll be benefiting greatly by using it with volatile flow now for kinetic weapons Osteo Striga. Guys, Osteo is one of the best ad clearing weapons and it also tacks on a ton of damage. I know this is like straight up pay to win, me suggesting this gun, but if you have the exotic catalyst, this actually pumps up this submachine gun to like well over a hundred rounds in a single Mac. And the fact that it spreads this poison, you don't need necrotic grips, although they do help, but you really don't need it. Just tack on some poison damage and let it do its work. Also in that kinetic slot, Chroma Rush. Now I think many of us probably have a decently rolled Chroma. Chroma being a 720. 20, having a number of very good traits to take inside of PVE, whether it's Rampage, Subsistence, you got Feeding Frenzy, Kill Clip, you really can't go wrong with Chroma. Also, the new Pulse Rifle, Syncopation. Now, I'm kind of leaning on this one a little bit because even though it is a Pulse Rifle, it's a 390, I like 390s inside of PVE, and it's a stasis weapon, meaning we can lean into things like Headstone or Frenzy or even Vorpal, but mainly Headstone. Speaking of Headstone weapons, IS Luna. Dude, I'm not going to say that stasis is going to be necessary to complete this raid but it would be a funny way of bungee to put us in a situation where we have to rely on the darkness to beat the darkness so having a headstone is luna and i think there's like vulpecula out there that you can get with headstone as well but either one of those just have a headstone weapon fate bringer now bring up fate bringer as well as any weapon that can roll with osmosis fate bringer is one of those considering we just talked about volatile flow and its ability throwing a grenade will convert your weapons damage type to match your subclass so if you're actually rocking a void subclass which i think many of us probably will be well La, osmosis will be procced and with la that will also work with volatile flow other weapons in that slot night watch you can never go wrong with this scout rifle guys this is a fantastic weapon it's also in that kinetic slot so it's dealing more damage bows a crude redemption or whispering slap there's also the new throne world bow but if you're like me you just haven't gotten it but that fell tar diddle that's a pretty good kinetic bow as well and being that it can also roll with things like successful warm-up and archer's tempo if you've got the ability to snag that enhanced roll by all means, give it a go. Another weapon to consider is the Crate. This is a Vice Auto Rifle. It deals stasis damage. It too can roll with things like Headstone, Overflow, One for All, Stats for All, Subsistence, Vorpal. Guys, if you have this Auto Rifle, check your vaults. This is also a very good weapon. And again, I know a lot of these we haven't even reviewed yet, but just take my words for it. Now, as far as snipers go, three different snipers I want you to consider. Succession, Godless, or Shepherd's Watch, and maybe even Eye of Soul. Now, I bring up Succession, because guys, that's kind of like the benchmark, right? Having the ability to roll with both Vorpal and Reconstruction is very, very nice. However, Thoughtless is the new seasonal sniper rifle. And look, don't overlook this one because, man, you can roll it with some enhanced perks on crafting. Things like enhanced firing line or enhanced overflow, enhanced rapid hit. I have personally not been able to sit down and test this sniper rifle out completely, but Thoughtless is a great option. Outside of that, though, Shepherd's Watch, you can roll it also with firing line. And of course, Eye of Soul, you can get that one with Vorpal. Other weapons to consider, Arbalus, always Arbalus. If we end up having to deal with barrier champions, voila, that is the weapon to deal with them. Next, we also have Heritage. Guys, if you have this slug shotgun, pull it out. Heritage has also got some very good combinations, including the likes of Reconstruction. So one to consider, guys. Next is Pardon Our Dust or Ignition Coat. Now, Pardon Our Dust was the Dares of Eternity grenade launcher. I've got some decent rolls on it, but yes, you can also roll it with blinding grenades, or you can just roll it with just pure damage, right? Spike 
impact grenades, Vorpal, auto loading holster, etc. Ignition code is the same exact thing, but you don't have auto loading holster, but you do have slide shot, meaning you can get a mass amount of blinding capabilities out, especially if you're rocking in things like slide shot and danger zone together, which extends that blind radius. Other weapons to consider as far as exotics go in that kinetic slot, Izanagi. I know many of us have not used Izanagi in forever, but at the end of the day, this is one of the hardest hitting weapons in the game. It's a little annoying to use, but pairing this with something like a lasting impression rocket launcher is still a very good play. And in terms of add clear with a horde, that's it. Just with a horde. Now, as far as heavy weapons go, let's begin with, of course, Gallahorn. Gallahorn is still one of the easiest weapons to use. It also has two rockets and a mag and having wolf pack rounds, it can clear out tons of ads. You cannot go wrong with Gallahorn. Also, Parasite. Now, depending on how many ads we're dealing with before a damage phase, or maybe we have a very short damage phase, again, Parasite at times 20 is the equivalent of about two and a half Gallahorn shots or almost three Gallahorn shots. So just to kind of give you some perspective of how much damage Parasite is doing. Now, you have to work up to that point and get kills to get that times 20, but it just depends on the encounter. Also, Deathbringer. We brought up a second ago how Deathbringer was synergizing with Volatile. And yes, the damage is very nice, although I will say Deathbringer is kind of a hassle to deal with, right? You got to get that right amount of height. You also need a big enough boss where all of those purple grapes will actually go toward the enemy. But yes, Deathbringer is a good one. Void Rocket with Clown Cartridge. Guys, there's a number of Void Rockets out there. You've got Royal Entry. You've got Tomorrow's Answer. You even got the new rocket launcher, Red Herring. Any of these, especially paired with Volatile and paired with Gallahorn, that's going to be really good damage. And being a legendary means it frees up your other slots. If you have a Red Herring, which is kind of what I'm looking at right now, Rocket Launchers just got a buff, or at least some of them did. Most notably, Adaptives. Adaptives got a 5% buff, which Red Herring falls into. And you can get the enhanced version of this weapon with things like Enhanced Lasting Impression, Enhanced Field Prep. Something to just consider, guys. If you have the materials to invest in this rocket launcher, this rocket will serve you well. If you don't, check your vault and see if you have Tomorrow's Answer or Royal Entry. Now, Linears, we have to mention Threaded Needle. And I know it's like a toss-up between Threaded Needle and, of course, Reed's Regret. If we're in a situation where we can easily activate Volatile Flow before a damage phase, then by all means, Threaded Needle. If not, then I'm probably going to break out old Reed's Regrets. Grenade Launchers. We have to throw in Memory Interdict. Now, I know. Who the hell even has this weapon? Some people do. I don't necessarily have a God roll myself, but you can get a very good roll on this weapon, including the likes of Clown Cartridge, Chain Reaction. Of course, being a Void Weapon will synergize with Volatile Flow. You see where we're going with this. Now, in terms of survivability, I don't know if we're going to be in a situation like this, but Air Apparent Catalyst gives some insane survivability. So, there may be a situation where we literally have to, like, I don't know, sit on a payload and tank a ton of damage. Dude, you may need to sit there with Air Apparent and its exotic catalyst and just shield the hell up. Just a thought. Next, we have Whisper. In terms of total damage, if we end up in a situation where we have to just do an extended amount of damage over a long period of time and it's just going to require a crap ton of ammo, Whisper is still the best to do it. Outside of that, guys, we also have Divinity. I do want us to still consider Divinity. I know this is not exactly in that heavy slot, but Divinity in that energy slot, just in case if we have a situation where we can't land a crit or the crit is just really difficult to land. Just remember that Divinity does not work with the weakening effect of our Void Grenades. Also, Wrist Runner, just to fall in line with that survivability. Okay, guys, those are my weapon suggestions. Now that we got weapons out the way, let's talk about mods. Now, I'm going to go over builds, of course, and say where I'm going to be putting these mods, but I want to just take this section to really focus on some of these, though, that are going to greatly help you in this upcoming raid. First is Psionic Forging 2. This essentially is a mod that increases the duration of the land tank origin traits and the effect of the Hake Breach Armaments origin traits. The main thing is the land tank origin traits. The weapons we mentioned a second ago, some of them were the seasonal weapons, most notably the bow and, of course, the sniper rifle. But, of course, there are others. It comes with the origin trait land tank, where final blows of the weapon will grant increased resilience and additional damage resist from combatants. Long story short, guys, this stacks up to three times, giving you a whopping 15% increase in damage resist, and it maxes out your resilience. And the reason why this artifact mod is so good is that it increases the duration of that damage resist. Next up is Well of Tenacity. Now, I bring up Well of Tenacity because Protective Light got a nerf, and a pretty hefty one at that. Protective Light now only reduces damage by 10%. Guys, if you take advantage of Well of Tenacity, when you pick up Void Elemental Wells, you're going to be getting that 50% increase in damage resist. Now, how do we create these wells? There's multiple ways to do it, guys. Melee Wellmaker, you've got some 
supreme well maker but just focusing on void considering we have void 3.0 and a lot of the builds we're going to give you today are void related builds reaping well maker to me is honestly the easiest one essentially after activating your class ability your next weapon final blow on a command will spawn a void elemental well by the way when you spawn void elemental wells this spawns not for just yourself it spawns for your entire fire team so everyone needs to be rocking these mods now some other mods to consider is thermo shock plating this reduces incoming arc damage from combatants as well as solar damage now some people are going to double up on thermo shock but considering it's very probable we're going to be dealing with scorn realistically we're going to be getting hit by all elemental types so my suggestion and even jay's suggestion on this one as he was the first one to bring it up to me was one thermo shock plating one void resist plating with it and this will essentially just cover you on all corners outside of that some mods that will definitely keep you alive better already essentially picking up an orb will help you regenerate health i know orbs aren't necessarily dropping for us at least not to the degree that it was before but when you do pick up an orb at least get some health so like better already recuperation etc you'd be surprised how mods like those can keep you alive other mods to consider lucent finisher now depending on whether or not we're going to be taking on lucent hive or champions which is very likely for both of those having lucent finisher is obviously beneficial guys you're creating heavy ammo for your teammates as well as your allies now for those wondering about things like suppressive glaive and stuff remember those got disabled amongst other things right peregrine greaves worm god caress warcliffe coil grand overture igalos smg the imperial needle legendary bow but long story short for those that are wanting to go in there with a glaive build it's really hard for me to suggest glaives when a lot of it was built around the suppression side of our glaives right now some other mods to consider one being seeking wells this is kind of an easier way of getting those wells to come to you which by the way benefits your abilities another one is elemental time dilation this is actually a stasis mod when you use this mod with say something like font of might or some other time duration elemental mod this increases that duration depending on how many of those mods you have on needless to say you can rock this with something like well of tenacity reaping well maker well of utility long story short i know we're kind of running out of mod slots right now but these are ways in which you could just stay alive and again a lot of people are really focused on damage how much damage can we do what's our dps listen that's important but if you can't even make it to the boss face none of this matters so these are the combination of mods that i want you to consider now let's get into the builds now our first build is of course a titan build fellas this is my staying alive build and that's pretty much it it's heart of inmost light which by the way works even better now in this sandbox than it ever did before with overflowing light but essentially using any ability whether it's your grenade melee or barricade empowers your other two abilities and empower means your abilities have faster regen melees and grenades do more damage and barricades have more hit points long story short guys heart of inmost light in void 3.0 is one of the best exotics in the game so for me i'm going for like a max resilience build but let me just walk through my subclass that i'm using and again all of this is right there in that time link the super doesn't really matter it really just depends on whatever it is you're doing so if you're locking down a control point and it's stationary the bubble's very good if you're having to be mobile though use just the base signal so you can use it offensively and of course you can banner shield block which by the way gives you a 40 percent increase in damage to your teammates we're going to talk about that in just a little bit but i'm rocking control demolition with bastion echo of expulsion echo of remnants and echo of undermining now long story short what happens is i pop a barricade when i pop a barricade two things occur number one overflow light is now in effect boosting my other abilities number two i activate perks like distribution and perpetuation and then whatever kill i get afterwards with reaping well maker will produce me a void elemental well when i go to pick up that well i have these two tenacity mods on both of which will be activated both of which will have an extended duration because i'm also rocking elemental time dilation simultaneously when picking up that void well volatile flow is now active and thus allows me to start spreading even more void icky icky amongst everything else simultaneously though we're also taking advantage of sign up forging 2 bolstering detonation and focusing strike with of course our thermoshock plating and void resistance mod fellas this is a pretty good build things that are subject to changes of course the weapons i'm rocking a funnel web with a dotless sniper and of course death bringer however depending on the encounter my weapons will be the first things to change as far as my build goes this is my staying alive build so for my titans that are interested in that one feel free to check that one out now with that being said let me bring up ursa furiosa and i want to bring up ursa furiosa because this is an exotic that returns super energy back based on how much damage is being blocked now the way it works with in-game content the more damage you block the more super energy you get back so in things like contest mode rates grandmaster nightfalls ursa furiosa is putting 
putting in work. Although it's been kind of nerfed, it's still a very good exotic, and you just don't know a situation in which you're going to need a banner shield. We may be in a boss damage phase tomorrow where the boss occasionally one shots one of our teammates. Well, la, you're going to need a banner shield. And on top of that, it's already been shown that banner shield provides a 40% buff instead of the 25% buff from Well of Radiance and Bubble. So just something to keep in mind, banner shields keeps your team alive. And I do want to mention how some mechanics from other aspects of an expansion will find its way into the raid. And what is something we've been doing a lot here lately in both Wellspring and in public events? Delivering payloads. Fellas, you want to be able to deliver a payload effectively? Have a banner shield on your team. Literally just block everything from start to finish. Now for my hunters. For my hunters, there are two different exotics I want you to look at going into this raid. Now, mod-wise, nothing really changes all that much from what I just showed you in my Titan build. Again, surviving is the game plan here. However, the difference here with Hunter is the sheer amount of damage you guys can do now. Orpheus Rig does so much damage. Matter of fact, just Mobius Quiver, just your super by itself, guys, does a crap ton of damage. You combine that with Mobius Quiver, it's insane how much damage you guys can do. And when you start combining it with fragments like Echo of Reprisal, where you're getting your super energy back when getting final blows while being surrounded by combatants and taking advantage of things like Stylus Executioner and Vanishing Step, guys, there's a multitude of ways you can build with your Night Stalker. And by the way, I'm going to link a build down below, which is a build that I used the other day with our bow, which is the Under Your Skin bow, which synergizes very nicely here on my Hunter. But the main takeaway is this. Mobius Quiver is doing a crap ton of damage. Combine that with Orpheus Rig to get that third volley, you have one of the best damage dealing supers in the game. Now, the other exotic that I want you to consider is if you need to go on a full lockdown, keeping your entire team alive kind of build. This is actually one suggested by Jay, but this is actually on the Stasis class. And that is with the new exotic Renewal Grasp. Essentially, this gives you the exotic perk, Depths of Dust Field. Essentially, your Dust Field grenades have a much larger effect radius. Also, allies inside the Dust Field grenades take reduced damage and targets inside the area deal reduced damage. It's actually a very good exotic, guys. Essentially, allows you to make these big globes. What makes this really nasty, though, is when you combine it with aspects like Touch of Winter. This essentially makes these grenades even better for your dust fields. And when you start to stack on things like Rhyme, Whisper of Chains, etc., there's a multitude of ways to stay alive with this build. The main thing is you want to synergize everything to build into your grenade. So having things like Bomber Perks on, Impact Induction, Elemental Charge, so that when you're picking up those stasis shards, you're getting charged with light. And I know we're not saying we're depending on charge with light, but in this situation, we actually may depend on high energy fire, considering we're depending on our exotic and these dust field grenades to keep us alive. So now we can start building a little more into damage. This is just one thought, and to just top this build off completely, you give it Agar Scepter. I hope this build right here is loading up for you when you click this link. If not, I'll be correcting this link at some point today. This is the link shared to me by Jay, though. Feel free to check that one out. Now for my Warlocks. Now, Warlocks, guys, man, I wish we can get super creative with your builds, and I'm going to try to be creative here, but let's be real. At the end of the day, someone somewhere is going to look at you and say, hey, man, where's Well? And I feel like Well of Radiance, Phoenix Protocol, and the variety of mods I've already given you guys is pretty much where you're going to be staying if you're playing Warlock, despite Void 3.0 being very, very good for your class. So just keep that in mind, Warlocks. If you're playing on a Warlock, your team is probably going to want you to use Lunar Faction Boots or Phoenix Protocol, one or the other with Well of Radiance, and that's just the way it is. However, if you can get away with not having to play that, and you can play with Void 3.0, I highly advise this build right here. Fellas, this is a variety of mods built into Nezirak Sin. Essentially, we're taking advantage of things like Volatile Flow. We're building into Reaping Wellmaker, Perpetuation, Well of Utility. However, what's a little different with this one is we're taking advantage of the class item mod Devouring Depths, which says that casting your Void Supers while you're critically wounded or benefiting from Devour increases your damage with that super. Now, the benefits of this is very obvious with Void 3.0. First up, the aspects on Void 3.0 is, of course, Child of the Old Gods, or as let's call it Cock. But casting your Rift creates this Void Soul, and when you damage a target with a weapon, your Void Soul flies to them and drains them, doing damage and weakening them. And with Reaping Wellmaker, you're also going to be creating a Void Elemental Well. Also, Feed the Void, defeating a target with a Void Ability will activate Devour. And this is what synergizes back into that class item mod. Now, there's a variety of ways you can go with this for the Void Fragments. I still love Echo of Explosion, just because of the Void Abilities and those explosions that occur with it. You also have Echo of Persistence, which will allow your Devour to last even longer. Echo of Remnants for that increase in grenade duration for certain grenades. Echo of Leeching, which states that melee final blows start health regeneration for you and nearby allies. I like the idea of this one just to keep the team alive. 
life, right? But honestly, feel free to slot out whatever. Regardless, though, combine this with Nezarak Sin and a void weapon from the variety that we've already given you guys. And you have a situation where everything is feeding into your ability regeneration, which is just a continuous loop here. So, guys, those are my build suggestions. Again, links to all of those. If the link is not loading for you correctly, when you click it and it takes you to the page where it shows the mods, but it doesn't show the exotic, you'll need to probably just go in and manually select the exotic. I don't know. I'm still trying to work out the details right now. Even if you don't select the exotic manually, you could still equip the mods and then just trade out whatever the exotic is and just slot in the mods that you're trading out with, right? So if it's a chess piece, whatever mods that is showing there in dim, slot that out. Trust me, I wish this was easier, but for the most part, mod wise, things are relatively staying the same for me for everything. Damage is important, but dude, you got to survive. Guys, if you're interested in watching this raid live, we will be live the entire day of Saturday. Feel free to come by and actually before we even begin the raid, we're going to be watching some lore videos from Mylan just to kind of give us a recap and context to what's about to go down. So come check it out. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.